All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and welcome back to our weekly updates of the Electoral College forecast that I have and the presidential election forecast that I've designed. And today we are going to be talking, we're, we're doing this uh, from COVID quarantine because, uh, well, everybody is doing everything from COVID quarantine. So, <laughs> um, light humor aside, I want to thank everybody who has subscribed to this channel um, and who continuously likes comments and views. Um, I'm working on some stuff, some you know specific election predictions. Um, one specifically in Kansas um, regarding uh, Kobach and uh, looking into doing some other stuff. Um, I have an election night style video in the works as well. Uh, that's a full election night as well. I don't have much better else to do um, at this time and place. Um, <laughs> um, there's only so much I can do to read and cook during, uh, during uh, quarantine. So... <laughs> I have a little bit more time to do videos and all that stuff. Um, and let's actually get into discussing the map. Uh, Trump's outlook has improved, and part of that's because if you look at the approval rating polls, his approval rating has actually stayed very steady during this whole um, boat mix of the economic panic as well as... Mm, I'll go ahead and say it, the pandemic. Um, his approval rating has not only stayed fairly steady, but he has seen a little bit of a bump in his approval rating um, compared to the average, or more accurately, his approval rating bump from February is sticking, so to speak. Um, it's kind of regressing a little bit towards mean, but... For most pollsters, it had already regressed back towards mean, and my my model had uh, slightly lagged behind that fall after his February highs. But now I'm noticing pollsters are starting to rate him rising again. The only one that isn't, curiously, is Rasmussen, and theirs is dropping. Every other pollster shows his approval rating rising into the 46, 47, 48 range and his disapproval falling to the low 50s, or in some cases, like Monmouth, into the high 40s. And I think um, Emerson had him in a similar area. Gallup had him fall a little bit too, um, but Gallup also had him at treading water at 50% almost, so a, a fall was to be expected at that point, but the thing is, Donald Trump's approval ratings have traditionally maintained very steady, have been fairly steady, but it's interesting that they're rising now when everybody think, when if you listen to the media, they'd be telling you that he's handled this so poorly, we're going to enter a new Great Depression, and that people are going to you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people in this country are going to die because of his mishandling of the COVID, when the reality is he handled it about as well as you could have expected with the information that was granted, um, and that was available at the time from China specifically, you know. So, I don't think he's mismanaged this. I think the Fed is mismanaging the economic factors by doing that one thing everybody learns not to do in basic high school econ, which is put more currency into the money supply by buying up trillions of dollars worth of stocks in order to try and create some sort of bump to the market. Uh, you know, the Fed's going to try and create inflation, which is a really bad idea. Um, there's a meme floating around where, you know, an economist or, you know, specifically somebody with an, an you know, an ANCAP bow tie, and I really actually want to get one now, but an ANCAP style bow tie uh, is yelling at, you know, the Fed for printing money and 
releasing tons of money into the supply, talking about inflation and all that stuff, and the Federal Reserve, you know, characters just going, ha ha, money printer go bzzz. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, I'm not happy with the Federal Reserve's handling of the situation and just stack it onto the uh, six foot pile of that stuff Bess Truman tried 30 years to get Harry to call fertilizer um, of reasons why the Federal Reserve needs to be eliminated. But I think the model that I've designed is, I think it's accurate. I haven't downgraded the economic situation as it looks like Trump's approval rating in terms of the economy is steady as well. Um, but I, of course, have downgraded it, you know, to only a full point swing, which sounds like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things really isn't. Um, because I think we've actually seen the worst of the economic panic from this pandemic. We are probably yet to see the worst in terms of the healthcare outcomes, but in terms of economic and market uh, problems, we've probably seen the worst. Um, other than that, you know, the model is showing Donald Trump having an edge. Of course, the close states being Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. Um, Michigan is extremely close, um, according to the model. And that's if you use it as a point prediction, which... I would advise against doing so because point predictions are almost always dead wrong. Uh, use them as an area pr prediction where any state in the lightest two colors could be regarded as competitive depending on what happens. Um, any state that's in the darker colors, you know, the darker two colors, the likely and safe category. Neither campaign should be investing money there. Um, but any state that is reasonably close, uh, you could forgive a campaign for investing there. So states like your Minnesotas, your Michigans, your Wisconsins, your Pennsylvanias, Ohio, Iowa, Arizona, North, and so uh, North Carolina, Florida, Georgia... Uh, Maine, because the at-large is competitive. New Hampshire, of course. Virginia. Um, Nebraska's second congressional district for the Democrats. Um, of course, the entire desert southwest. It makes sense to put money into these areas, if only just enough to maybe open it up as an avenue. But if Democrats are having to rely on Georgia's 16 electoral votes in order to win they're getting blown off the board. Um, similar story with North Carolina, but North Carolina is more reasonable. Whereas Republicans, if they're having to rely on New Mexico as their option to win, uh, there are some problems that they've been having in their campaign. So, anyway, I want to thank all y'all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Remember, if you like the content, likes, comments, subscriptions, they always do help. I greatly appreciate each and every one of y'all. Have a nice day. Stay safe out there. And uh, I'll see y'all next time. Take it easy.